Amen. Glorify the name of the Lord. I plead everyone with the peace of the Lord. I invite the brothers to stand up at this time in reverence to the word of the Lord. That is found in Second Chronicles, um, chapter 14. We're going to read um, Second Chronicles 14 from 2 to 7. Oh, 6 to 7. Second Chronicles uh, 14, 6 and 7. Second Chronicles um, 14, chapter 14, verse 6 and 7. Amen. <coughs> E edificou cidades fortes em Judá, porque a terra estava quieta e não havia guerra contra ele naqueles anos, porquanto o Senhor lhe dera repouso. Disse, pois, a Judá, edifiquemos estas cidades e cerquemo-las de muros, torres, portas e ferrolhos. Enquanto a terra ainda está quieta diante de nós, pois buscamos ao Senhor nosso Deus. Buscamos-lo e Deus nos repouso em redor. Edificaram, pois, e prosperaram. Amém? Amém. O brother pode se sentir. <coughs> My brothers, uh, at this time, we are in a, a part that happened uh, in Judah. It was an episode that makes us remember many, many times our lives. The precautions that we should take the right moment when we are talking about uh, we're talking about um, the reconstruction of Jerusalem Nehemiah's this episode right here was different <coughs> right here they were in a moment of peace there were no wars there were no other things, no other attacks of an invasion. Um, the king Asa, he had, he had become the king. And the word says, the verse 2, 3, uh, the Bible uh, shows that he was a good king. And he was, he did what was good. Um, right into the eyes of the Lord, he brought um, life to the people of the Lord. He burned all those altars of the of gods, where there was altars to other gods. He sent men to destroy. He brought the the spiritual way the spiritual side to the people of God and on this the Lord <coughs> gave the people 10 years of peace with the wars just something interesting that in this period of time uh, the king Lazarus he had he was worried we cannot Accommodate ourselves. Um, the, the enemy is outside, just waiting for the right moment. We can wait, we can have peace, but the enemy is right around us. But God 
on sides of the people. Let's uh, bring life to the cities. Let's build whatever it fell. So something that could be, let's try to protect ourselves from some, anything that could be a gap for the enemy to come in. He brought people to seek the Lord. And there he said to the people, let's go now, like go around the city with walls. Let's take care of the city. Let's care about and build towers. Let's build towers. Let's put doors. And so he did. In the last verse, he said, So they built and prospered. So the word says uh, that they built whatever the king wanted. What else? And what else does the Bible says? Where is it? Oh, they already closed the Bible. So they built, so they built and prospered. So, the Bible made sure to show us that the man he realized the work of the Lord when he disposed himself, when he cares. When he doesn't feel accommodated, the Lord, uh, the God, he makes us proper, prosper. That's what happened here. That's what happened over there in Jerusalem. When Nehemiah, he put in his heart to bring a life to Jerusalem. But why? Because all the... People from all, all the people from Judah, they always wanted to be there. All the people they want to go to Jerusalem to glorify the name of the Lord. Those to bring tents, those to bring a bunch of stuff, those to stay there. Because the city could, could not fit everyone. So. Oh, so if we're not going to have friends, we're not going to have place, I am going to bring my tent and stay outside. But I'm not going to miss this blessing of the Lord. I'm going to go. I'm going to glorify the name of the Lord. They, always, they used to walk, the Jews used to walk days just to be there. My brothers, tonight the Lord shown that we should worry we should get worried about Jerusalem. Not this Jerusalem that we hear in the television. No, they want to. I... Oh, do you know that they have one of the most intelligent uh, service? Yeah, in Jerusalem, yeah. Let's just pray for them. The Lord, the Lord, bless the one that prays for Jerusalem. That's what the word says. So we are not trying to bring. We're not trying to bring something or say something about uh, Jerusalem of this life. No. The Jerusalem that the Lord is showing, that He's saying that we need to worry about, it is the celestial Jerusalem. It is the spiritual Jerusalem. It is the one that Jesus is preparing for us. That's the Jerusalem that we should worry about. But for that, there is some stuff that we got to do. No one goes there if they're not prepared. No one goes to Jerusalem separated from the Lord if you're not inside of the project of the Lord. And for that, we have to do what Lazarus did. So we could have condition, the spiritual condition, so we could have um, reasons to go to Jerusalem. We have to care about our cities. <coughs> we cannot let it wait. We cannot wait for the bad things to happen. 
for the worst to happen. We gotta do it now. Because now we ha we're in peace. Now the Lord takes us to think and in, because now we have to worry. Until because now everything's good, you know. Everyone lives in the United States, you know. Oh, it's the first world. Everything is right there. No one is going through struggles, anything like that. You know, everything is good. Money, money, you know, securing. You're secured. That's how we live. We live like these people. A moment of happiness. But it's this moment that we have to worry about our spiritual life. There are moments like this that we have to... What does the, the word edify means? It is make it better. Edify means make it better. And there is nothing better to make better things in a city when it's not in a bad time, when the time is good. Am I right? So in, in a couple, a couple months, we're gonna go through one the hurricane season. We're gonna you know start looking if the if everything's right you know the windows, if we have any anything loose in the garden. Soon we'll start the promotions. What is cheaper? Is the light generator? It's cheaper. Why? Wow, because the people know that the time to prepare himself, their self, is now. It is, it's now when the hurricane is coming. And then you're going to have to run, you know. You're going to have to run and ask for help. Oh, give me this, give me, I need some gas. No, you need to prepare yourself now. The city, they prepare themselves. Things are done in the good times because when the rain comes, when the storm comes, there no one can go outside. We cannot, in the moment that we live, the church of the last days, the, the church of soon, it cannot be accommodated. There's not going to be other church, it's just us, my name is already there. I already have my Bible. I already sing some songs. I don't need to pray anymore. I don't. I don't need to seek the Lord. No, that's not how it works. The moments now. The moment of peace. A moment where apparently everything is normal. Where you're not sick. Where you're not in the hospital. Where, where you have health. You're young, but it's now wings. Um, Lazaro, Lazaro, he had an army of 300,000 men. Men's. That's a really strong army, but he wasn't. He didn't care about his army. He wasn't trusting on his army only because his trust was in the Lord. He wasn't thinking about if his men were ready or not. He wanted to defend himself from the enemy. And many times we let the things to appear. And many times um, we let ourselves to accommodate ourselves. Because sometimes we don't see the struggle. Because when we don't see, we accommodate ourselves. And many, thing, many times people... They fell in the struggles because they don't see, because they're not leaving the, the time of getting better. So Lazarus, when he became lay, uh, king, he said, oh, let's uh, end all the altars to the gods that we don't serve. Let's break it. He brought an amendment to the people. He brought all the people to get worried in a spiritual way. And this is what the Lord is calling our attention for. So we could be 
preparing ourselves and worrying about not just our lives, but not only our family, our churches, the pastors, the sons. We should be praying, yes, so the Lord could still be giving moments of peace, moments of peace, moments where the Lord could have the freedom to mani manifest Himself, just like He did today. It's moments like this that make yourself being in the Lord. It's moments like this that we seek to hear the voice of the Lord so we can see the angels operating among us, bringing us the answers of our prayers. This is what we need. And we are in this moment right now. And we have to break the altars of the strange gods. It cannot be any other thing that could take away our our fellowship with the Lord. Burn it. If there's anything in your way to serve the Lord, burn it. Put order in your life. The priority of the of your life it is to serve the Lord. It is to come in a service and go home feeling renovated. It doesn't matter where you, where you are, you know, where you're sitting. Even though you're not participating in anything, but leave this place with a new life. Happy. You know why? Because God is present. God, it is here in this place. We're not here uh, looking for armies, looking for a man, a leader, no. But what matters is that we are here to hear the voice of the Lord. We need is to hear the voice of the Lord. And the king, he said, let's build, let's build uh, towers, walls, gates. Now, be, uh, now because the land is in peace. What does the walls mean? What does the wall mean in a spiritual way? It is what is around us. It is what protects us. What gives us... Um, it is what makes us stay inside of the... Inside of the project of the Lord. The walls are the... Blood of Jesus. It is what God... Gave it to us. It is what makes us leave... The... Leave whatever the enemy is heading for us and get inside to protect ourselves. And when you're in there, you become protected by the Lord. You become a, a chosen one by the Lord. Because, you know, Jesus, he's jealous of who says. When you live in his. When you live in Jesus, his power gets around you and makes you to stay inside of his work. What is the towers? Vigilance. The towers they used to be placed in the right in the right places. So they could see the enemy from far away. They, so they could see the danger and they would stay there. They would stay there just looking. If the enemy will come closer, they will scream, they will sing the trumpet. It talks about um, how sensitive the servant is. The servant needs to, needs to be a vigilant because if you're vigilant, as more vigilant you are, more sensible you will be to hear the voice of the Lord. Because from far away you will see the problem. From far away, you see the enemy that is right there. They are the attacks. They're made from distance. The towers, they speak of that. 
in the moment of vigilance. The moment of sick. It's just you and the Lord. Sometimes in your house, in the early dawn, at work, instead of instead of a car, in the church, you used to pray the Lord and say, oh Lord, have mercy on me. Give me the discernment so that I can understand when is the enemy trying to take away my blessing. Sometimes we get confused. Sometimes when people tell us, try to help us, but the servant that is on top of the tower, he's a vigilant. He needs to have discernment to understand when is God talking and when are the attacks of the enemies. The gates. It talks about the direct attack. The gates talks about, uh, does anyone know what about this? Uh, we usually say, um, especially to the youths, do not bolt this. It is the thing that locks the, do the door. There's the door, and there's the, the little lock, you know, in the door. It, it is that thing that is, that makes, it helps you to hold the door. It is that thing that is used to keep a door locked. It's called boat. And that is part directly to your life. Because if you're inside a house and you don't want nobody to come in, you just close the door and you just put the lock in, the boat in. So when a servant of the Lord, uh, he's in fellowship with the Lord, So, when the, the servant of the Lord sees the enemy, he closes the door and locks it. But when he's outside of the blessing, the door is open. You know, the boat is over there, it's open. Jesus is not inside, he's letting the things for the word coming in. And sometimes um, the enemy comes in from gaps that you don't even see. It's a computer. Is it a cell phone? Is this and that? The Lord says that we should escape from the appearance of evil. It is that you close the door and you close the lock. So no one could come in. When the servant of the Lord does that, he's shutting down the enemy. He's making the enemy to stay outside. Making the enemy stay outside of his heart, his spiritual life. So that's why the Dirty King said, let's put walls, gates, towers, and bars. We cannot only put doors because sometimes uh, a storm comes, and you know, and there's a vacuum. And you know, sometimes it opens. Your door could open, but if your door is locked, there is no way. And the, and the door, and the boat, it talks about your disposal to the Lord. It says that you have to lock it. doesn't matter if we're right here talking, the intersection group prays, and we pray. If your door, it's not locked. Because we're going to pray, you're going to receive your blessing, you're going to turn, and the, bless, the enemy will come and steal your blessing. But when you're leaving this in this spiritual place, with your door locked and the boat in, the enemy will be ashamed, and you'll be honored by the Lord. That's why my brother, the Lord tonight, he calls us. He invites us, let's rebuild our cities. So for that, we have to show that we really want. We're going to sing a song. If you want at this time to put your spiritual life in the altar of the Lord. If you want to edify your spiritual life, 
if you want to make things better in your spiritual life, when the group singing, you're going to be praying the Lord. You're going to be saying, Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, give me strength. Give me audacity to put walls, towers, doors, and gates in my spiritual life, in my house, so I could come and prosper in every single part of my life. Amen. Holy, holy, be the name of the Lord. I invite the brothers to stand up at this time. My brothers, uh, from the verse 9, um, we can see that the attack came, the enemy came. Aza, he had, uh, do you know how many men he had? Do you know how many men uh, Judah was attacked? It says right here. One million men and three hundred carriots. The man. De homens e trezentos carros. Às vezes você pensa que você pode vencer sozinho. Sometimes you think you can win a battle alone by yourself. But by yourself you're not gonna win. By yourself no one will win. Asa, he prayed, he prayed the Lord, and the Lord gave deliverance. The Lord. Uh, the God, God gave victory to his men. His army was three times smaller, but Azza, he believed in God. And our strength, it is the same as his, to believe in God. Because in Jesus, 
we are more than victors. There is no power greater than the power of God. It is the song that we just sang. Only with one word we will be victorious. Amen. Let's have a word of glorification to the Lord. O oh Lord, grace we give you. We thank you because we have seen your miracles among us. Strong you are. Grace we give you because everything you determined it's happening in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for the God creator that you are, for the power that acts. Everything constructs, everything is built, and we thank you for everything that you have done in our lives. Thank you. Because we can feel your presence in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, my brothers, tonight the, the Lord shown uh, two gifts. One of the gifts uh, the Lord shown a man that we, we come here tonight. And this man has had some struggle walking with the Lord. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. One day he prays, two or three days he doesn't. Today he read the, the text. He comes. He stay here for like a month and then goes away. He's totally, the word of the Lord says, he was, he, he couldn't walk by himself. He couldn't walk by himself. But tonight the Lord was giving him a deliverance. He was touched by the power of God. But don't let this this moment right here to be sullen you're gonna leave this place you're gonna go to your house but you need to stay praying the Lord this seeking for the Lord it needs to be constant you know praying without stop we need prayer we need to seek just like we need to seek the Lord, just like we need air. No one stops breathing, so that's how we're gonna seek the Lord. So if we don't, if we don't do this, we're gonna be easy for the attack of the enemy. The Lord also showed up a lady that she's been having a problem. Her heart. We can see that that's in a spiritual way. And that is making her to go away from the presence of the Lord. And not to seek the Lord just how she did it before. But tonight the Lord was giving her experience. She was um, an angel would come and you would operate a blessing. Yeah, an angel will come. And the angel will make um, a spiritual surgery on her. So tonight, if you felt the touch of an angel, if tonight you felt the ch touch of the Lord in your heart, don't don't throw it away. This opportunity, just keep it, because God God wants you to leave this place renewed, a new life. With nothing, no problems, no part of his feelings. Um, something came, but today, Lord is giving you a blessing. Amen. Let's pray. And in the service, we already spoke. You know, we spoke a lot of things about today, like that we want to live with the Lord. So let's close our eyes. O oh Lord, take our service night take all of the prayers that were made all the help all the ask for help those who prayed for you put in their lives in your presence we ask the Lord that you could bless us because we are opening our hearts we ask that you could answer 
and protect every single one with your spirit to enter here and taking away all the tiredness all the spiritual sickness and that every single one of us could be sure that our name is written in the, the book of life take us in peace so we could have a night a good night in your presence preparing yourself to tomorrow so we could have an active day tomorrow so we could glorify the name of the Lord seek your face come to your house and once more listen to your voice take our prayer in the name of Jesus Amen in your name we say that the love of God our eternal Father the grace of our God Jesus Christ the sweet constellations of the Holy Spirit could be upon, upon us now and forever more Amen the brothers may be seated if anyone needs a prayer we are at disposal just reminding everyone that tomorrow at 10 30 we have the, the sunday school the study is still nehemiah many things the lord has to show us so those who could come here tomorrow together um, we're gonna thank you and we're gonna learn more about the mysteries of the lord um we have a little meeting with group a and b and we're gonna have a little Yeah, amen.